Today we're going to find out not only what my testosterone level is, but also what other things we should be looking at when we want to better our health on a hormone level, like our free testosterone. We can use this information to accurately understand what is happening inside our bodies, and if something isn't right, at least we know where to start. This is exactly what happened to me when I got my results back. If I had just ordered the most basic test, then I would have thought everything was fine. I might even have been a little bit impressed. But when I took a closer look, I realized things weren't as good as it first seemed, and I needed to take a serious look and make some improvements. And these same improvements may be able to help you. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Let me start at the beginning. What I did is I ordered a hormone test from Let's Get Checked. And full disclosure, I was able to get them to sponsor this video. The process is pretty simple. Once the test kit arrived, I had to prick my finger with a lancet and fill the collection tube with blood. Then I put it in the packaging they supplied and shipped it off to them. You get your results online in two to five days. So here are my results. Total testosterone is 29.6 nanomoles per liter. Now if you're in the US, then you'd go by nanograms per deciliter, and this converts into 853.7 nanograms per deciliter, which sounds pretty good. The average T level for a man is about 679, with a thousand being about the highest possible naturally. But here is where there's room for improvement. When it comes to my sex hormone binding globulin, for which the rest of the video I'll refer to it as SHBG, I'm at the very upper end of normal, and this is important as it binds to testosterone, effectively making it unusable. So you could feasibly have normal test levels, but have symptoms of low testosterone, simply because you have high sex hormone binding globulin. This becomes even more clear when you look at my free androgen index. So you see here, I'm at the very low end of normal. This is basically the amount of usable or free testosterone that I have in my body after accounting for the testosterone that's bound up by the SHBG. Right after we look at the last two things that I had tested, we're going to come back and see what we can do to improve this number. Because no matter what our total testosterone is, the higher our androgen index, the more anabolic state we'll be in to build muscle, and the more testosterone we'll have available for our other body functions. The next thing they tested for is prolactin, and this came up average. If prolactin is high, it interferes with the testes and the production of testosterone. The last test is for estradiol, which is essentially estrogen. And again, you can see that I'm in the normal levels. Many of the symptoms of high estrogen are the same as low testosterone. And usually, if one has high estrogen, they also have low testosterone. So it's good to see where we're at. Now, improving total free testosterone will benefit any man. And the best way to do this is to lower our sex hormone binding globulin level. Of course, they say our levels increase as we age, just like they say our testosterone levels decrease as we age. Now, I've read enough studies to know, and we can see here with my own test results, that testosterone doesn't necessarily have to decrease. Which brings me to the question, what do we need to do to lower our SHBG levels? There are a couple of diseases, like hypothyroidism and liver disease, as well as some medications that will elevate sex hormone binding globulin. As with a lot of hormones in our body, being at a good body fat percentage helps. Not only does it improve growth hormone and testosterone production, but it also decreases SHBG. What we eat is also important. Higher protein diets have been shown to lower sex hormone binding globulin, and too high a fiber diets have been shown to increase it. Now, I already have a high enough protein diet, but because of my high vegetable intake, I wondered if this might be something I could improve. But after checking my average fiber consumption, it turned out to be about 24 grams a day, still under the recommendation of 30 grams per day for a man. Studies have shown that abstinence from alcohol, even for a short period of time, can reduce sex hormone binding globulin levels. I'm not one to take a lot of supplements, but vitamin D is one that I'm seriously thinking about starting. Not only has it been shown to increase testosterone, but also free testosterone. And it does this no matter what level of body fat we might have. The second one I'm thinking of is boron. And while it's found in foods, if I wanted to do an experiment with vitamin D and boron to see if it increases my free testosterone, a supplement might be the best way to ensure that I took a consistent trackable amount. The results with boron are quite promising. 
One study showed lower levels of SHBG in as little as six hours, and by the end of the study, there was a 28% increase in free testosterone. So in order to see if these supplements can help me, I would take them for one month, then retest myself and see if there was any improvement in my free androgen index. Now, if you'd like to find out what your testosterone or free androgen levels are, I will leave a link in the description and you can use the discount code Lawrence20. Let's get checked has numerous other tests that you can take as well, so you can find out more about everything from your sexual health, prostate PSA, colon, liver, cholesterol, and kidney health. This way we can keep working out while having fun. This is Lawrence from Fit and 50. We'll talk to you again in the next one.